to our Wednesday night service live on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, we want to welcome you. And like every time we come on, if you're maybe tuning in for the first time, or I know people kind of come on as we get going, takes a minute to get people on here. But uh, we just encourage you to let us know you're out there. If you have a prayer request, we have people kind of man in the computer that uh, you can send a prayer request. I know we have heard of just some close family tonight, and not here in town, but in a, in a town about three hours away of one of the parents of somebody we know that has just admitted with uh, coronavirus. So we, we just lift her up right now, Lord. We lift up this family member. It's a mom. But Lord, not just her. She represents thousands and thousands of the families that are having loved ones that are battling this virus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We just send healing right now, Lord, and we just continue to step up in faith right now and just take authority and curse that virus right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we continue to stand tonight and believe you for divine protection. Lord, give your angels charge over all our homes, our families, our fathers, our mothers, our sons, and our daughters. Hallelujah. Let there be a divine shield of protection in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just continue to stand together as the church, as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, we come to worship you tonight. So if you're there in the living room or in the kitchen or wherever you are, just join us and begin to lift up your voice. Lord, we come to worship you, Lord. Worship you. There's nothing you can 
for a long time, Jose. I see you in the future, and you look a lot better than you look right now. I see you in the future, and you look a lot better than you look right now. I see you in the future, and you look a lot better than you look right now. I see you in the future, and you look a lot better. If you always do what you've always done. source of joy needs to be internal because man if you look about what's going on that would rob your joy real quick my joy is in the Lord amen my joy is not dependent upon what they say on the news how everybody treats me today amen my joy is tied to my relationship with my God and even though this world's changing he never changes he's the source of our joy amen See, that's different to have joy right in the middle of a crazy time, amen? I feel the joy of the Lord. He's a great God, you guys. He's a great God. And this didn't take God by surprise, I promise you that. He's not up there stressing, you know, wringing his hands. What am I going to do about this? He's in control. He's God, amen? Amen.
Would you call me out of darkness and you silence every lie and no other voice will define me because I belong to you and I belong to you by your blood by your blood
greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world the words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world the word come on rise up right now let's take authority over this coronavirus greater are you
found my home in you. Family, we are family. We are family. Belong to you. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than. crisis is over. In Jesus' name, we know who we are. We found our family. We've come home to the Father. We've come home to the Father. people were praying. I was praying that this coronavirus wouldn't even come in Montgomery County, but it did. And I was talking to my wife earlier. I'm like, okay, well, so I prayed that, and it came. So do we quit praying? Do we throw in the towel? No, no. Matter of fact, we got to rise up and just take a stand, take a stand, take a stand. See, Jesus, you know, like he said something really crazy. And he gave this parable about this, you know, this uh, woman who kept harassing this unjust judge. And she just wouldn't quit. She wouldn't give up. Finally, the unjust judge says, out of sheer frustration, said, give her what she wants. Because she's going to drive me crazy. Because she just wouldn't quit. She wouldn't give up. And then he says something. Jesus said something after that. He said, but yet, I wonder, Jesus said, when I come back to the earth, Will I even find faith on the earth? Wow. He said, will, I, will, there anybody, will there be anybody who still believes, who still prays and believes in healing, believes in deliverance? Amen? Believes that when we say demons got to go, they got to go. Amen? Is there anybody that still believes we're supposed to heal the sick? Come on, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Just because we don't see it, are we supposed to just stop and throw in the towel and lose our faith? No, we keep believing, believing, believing. And this is a song that talks about how the greatest, the highest.
highest form of worship will come from within the flame. We're kind of in the middle of a flame here, you know, and with the coronavirus and our world's been, we're all like home and people are like, it's crazy. But the deepest cry of worship is going to come from within the flame. And you know, there's a, this could be a time where we just fold up our tent and like, you know, whatever, or we could rise and shine and lift up a song of praise right in the middle of the storm. When everybody else is like crying, we're praising, amen. When everybody else is worrying, we're rejoicing, amen. See, that's what faith does. Faith says, you know, I'm putting my trust in the Lord, amen. And I might not be seeing everything I want to see, but God, I still believe in you. And though he slay me, yet will I praise him, amen. That's what So let's just sing this little song before we get into the Bible tonight. Through every changing moment, find me at your throne. Through every shifting season, we'll find this heart bowed down. Through every stormy tempest, Every circumstance When life is at its brightest Or when shadows gather round So let me find my way To the place of praise Cause I will which cost me nothing oh, I will not breathe that which cost me nothing if the highest praise is a sacrifice and the greatest song is to give my life then what I will cry of worship will be heard within the flame. Let's sing that again. When everything is easy, any heart can sing, but our deepest cry of worship will be heard within the flame. And so I'm breaking through the side. there in your home. 
song, you know, one of the things that's going to have to change, you guys, is you're going to have to get your worship on in your house, in your kitchen, in your bedroom. I don't know where on your front porch, in the bathroom. I don't know where, but you're going to have to do it because we can't come to church and do it. So you're going to have to get your, you know, your player out, your whatever, whatever kind of music thing you got, and put some worship on. And you're going to have to find your way to the place of praise on your own. See, I think this is what, what the devil meant for bad. I think it could turn out for good because it's forcing people to say, listen, I got the, I got the praise at home now. I got the praise with my kids. I got to praise with my wife. Me and my wife, we prayed more in this last week or two than, than for a long time. She's home all the time. She's home from work. And how many know what the devil meant for bad can turn out for good? But moms and dads, you got to rise up. Be the priest of the home. Say, come on, kids. We got to keep our worship on. We got to find our way to the place of praise. So, Lord, here we are once again. Here we are once again. Worshiping, Lord. Come on, find your way there right now. So I find my way to the place of praise again. Lord, I find my way to the place of praise again. Lord, here we are.
thoughts define me You're inside me Lord, you're mine Reality Come on, let's cry out to him tonight Sing Abba
security. stand together in faith right now. No matter what happens, we're okay, amen? We're going to be all right in Jesus' name, man. Come on, let's just cry in the name of the Lord, Tom, I love you. Sing, Abba, I belong to you. Come on, tell him tonight. Sing, Abba,
back to the garden with you. Back to the garden with you. Back to the garden. Back to the garden. Back to the garden. It's a new and living way. Back to the garden with you. has been calling us back to the garden and it's through the new and living way through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ the finished work of the cross there's a journey there's a path there's a way that we can go back to the garden and just walk with him in the cool of the day before the fall before the shame all that's taken out of the way through the blood of Jesus amen amen Woo, that was fun thank you guys yeah so all right well let's let's come down here and if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to just have a little Bible study here for about 20, 30 minutes, and go from there. Like I said, this is quite a different time. You it look is. your way over there, like you just get over a little bit. Since I would been going to be married uh, like 40 years here, so we, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, you know, uh, actually in, in Matthew 11, you know, I've read this over and over, and and you know, me and my wife Lisa here, and and I don't know who else watching, and there again, uh, I would say you know, like um, if you haven't like signed on or told us where you're from or you know, make a comment or something, because that's really kind of one of the ways we can tell you're on there, and so we want to welcome you if you're on there, but, you know, um, I think there's a lot of people uh, all over the world, and I run into them all the time, who s struggle sometimes with God, like, why this happened, or how about this, how come it didn't happen like I thought it was going to happen, because I think we've all had our own ideas of how our life was going to happen, and it was going to be like this and like this, and we're going to have three kids and two and a half dogs and two garage, two car garage, and you know everything and whatever. And we think we have it all figured out, and then boom, nothing. Ha I don't know about anybody else, but right. really, basically, nothing's happened like I thought was going to happen. Is do I? I ain't got no many, many amen people in here that can right. amen. But <laughs> if you're out there, you might say amen because I know right. life is a mystery in a little bit, and and things happen. And listen, sometimes bad things happen to good people. That's right. We live in a broken, fallen world. And when that happens, a lot of people check out on God because that if God is good, then how come bad things happen to good people? And let me just tell you, God is good. If it ain't good, it ain't God. But we live in right. a broken, sinful, fallen world, right. and it's messed up, and people get caught up in the mess. Do I hear an amen? We haven't seen the full revelation of his coming of of right. the redemption of everything at, at this right. season yet. Right, and, and I believe that day is coming right. where there'll be no evil, there'll be no darkness, right. there'll be no devil, and everybody says, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But on the other hand, right. 
because we're in this world and we're in this mess and with darkness all around, it's a very, very unique time that I think, you guys, I, I just think that when it's over, we'll all wish we could have come back and did a do-over. Wish we would have been more aware of the fact that even though this is maybe the hardest time and in this life you're going to have tribulation, but this is the only time we get to praise him in the storm. Because after this life, there won't be no storm. There won't be no coronavirus. And there won't be any sickness and disease and cancer and evil. So you won't have to choose. See, it's, to me, the highest form of worship is choosing to be obedient and to praise him right smack dab in the middle of darkness and craziness and the fire and the storm. That's why I love that song we sing. The deepest cry of worship will come from within the flame. Anybody can praise him on the mountaintop. That's right. But who can praise him right and smack dab in the middle of the fire when all hell's breaking loose and nothing's going like you think it ought to go? Right. And you don't have any answer. The only thing you can do is left to do is your faith and to trust in God. And I'll just be honest with you, there's going to be some answers that are going to have to come later. Because I got a couple for the Lord. I'm going to be real with you. I got a couple for him. Right. When I get there, I don't know about you, but I got like, what about this, God? And what about this? And you know, but I know this, that when, I, when he answers me, that'll be the end of the discussion right there. That's right. And then there'll be no more <laughs> questions because I'm okay. Because right. his ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But, we only yeah, see through ahead. that glass dimly right now. And so we only see through that glass dimly right now. So we don't understand everything that's going on yet. But I know that when we, when we uh, explode into new life and those answers uh, come to us, it'll just be clear as day. I believe that, you know, and, and, and that's, that's faith, isn't it? See, faith is the, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And see, and faith isn't just getting everything we want. Faith is not giving up when we don't get what we want. Yeah. I call it yeah. the other faith. The other faith. Right. And see, I grew up, you know, uh, after I got saved, I went to Rhema. And if anybody knows what that means, that's faith camp. That was Brother right. Hagen. And he's and a mighty man thankful. of God. Very, very thankful. thankful. Yeah, thank for God. Because, I mean, they taught faith and faith and right. more faith. Right. And I thank God for that. Because we have to learn to stand in okay, our position. We have to learn to stand in our position um, in this world because Jesus turned that back over to us right. to take authority over things. Right. And, and, and so, so yeah. that training was so good. In it that was, season. yeah. And it really increased my faith. But, but you know, I'm just saying that, that there are a lot of people out there that have had experience who prayed, who believed God, and I'm getting real here, and, and it didn't happen. Or how about this? They died. See, we well, have we an can, experience, yeah. yeah. And, and I told you that in chapel this morning, you know, why don't you tell us just a little bit about our experience, because I was a fresh graduate out of Rhema and, and had faith taught to me. Well, and, and too, when, remember when you were a youth pastor, we had a young lady who right, right. came and we prayed for her and she had a brain tumor. And the doctors actually did a test um, after we prayed for her and there was a hole where that brain tumor was and it had gone and they said she'd never had chil have children and she had, was it five, four, She's got five? a whole, she lives right here in town and, 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 and she, came, she came to youth group. I was a youth pastor and she was full of faith. Right. And she came in, her, and her name was Gina. She came in, and she, she was full of And she just said to me, and with a bunch of youth group at our house, and she said, listen, I just believe if you guys will pray for me, I'll be healed. Right. And I'm like, wow. So I <laughs> said, okay. <laughs> so we got a chair and put it in the middle of our living room and got all these kids around. We called Pastor Wayne because I, I thought, man, I'm a little in over my head here. So, hey, Pastor, come over here because I was just, a, I mean, we I was in young. my, I, we, we were, were real young. young. We were yeah. just getting started. But she had such great faith, so we said, okay, we're going to do this thing. We put her in the chair in the middle of my living room. All these kids got around her, and we just did the best we could do to pray the simple prayer of faith. We'll say, in the name of Jesus, tumor, you got to go, be healed. Right. And, and literally, she went back to the doctor that next week, I think it was, or, or the week or right after that. You may not be telling the story quite right. Yeah, it's been, been a while back. Right, it's been a while. <laughs> it had been about 40 years ago. 
But she went back, and they did an MRI. They did a routine MRI after they did the first one. And I'll just say this real quick. They came back in. They said, listen, we're sorry. We hate to inconvenience you, but something must have went wrong. We need you to come back in. We got to do it over again. So they go in and do a second MRI. They come back out, and they said, they just shook their head, and they said, we've never seen anything like that. We don't know what happened. They said, we can see the indention in the side of your brain where the tumor was, but the tumor's gone. And, and guess what? She got a whole house full of kids. She's adopted she kids. They live right here in this community. Their ma her husband's a pastor, and, and it's just That's a miracle. Amazing. So you we've seen miracle. that side of it. So, you know, that right. was before Hannah. Right. We heard about Hannah, and then many So our daughter's Hannah, and uh, on her 11th birthday in the year 2000, we had gone, we knew something was going on with her eye. So her eye had gone crossed or it kind of went to the side, and we thought, oh, she just needs glasses. It's a lazy eye, and ended up at the eye doctor. And when they did the test, there was this, you could tell this, this intense, we need to send you for an MRI right now. And we went and had an MRI that happened in Parsons, and immediately they said, you need to go immediately to Children's Mercy in Kansas City. Um, we know what it could be, but we can't say you need to go immediately. And when we like got that up there day, like that this, day, and we're like, well, we have five kids. We've right. got to, you know, we've got to figure out what we can do and how we can get there and everything. And, and so we went actually the next day, um, and that's when our storm started because once we got there, um, it wasn't long. We, we spent a long minutes, time. Maybe. We spent a long time in the emergency room, and then they finally got us in and, and it just wasn't long, and that's when they called Dick and I into a room and had some life specialists with Hannah and the kids, and they said, uh, we are sorry. Your daughter has a, a astrocytoma in the pons of the medulla oblongata, and that is a terminal t tumor in the pons of the brain, right in the brain stem, and uh, uh, we'll you know, do what we can uh, we did radiation, we'll do what we can, but the doctor's report was there's no hope. So we stood on the word of God along with so many. World Revival Church prayed with us, so many of our friends mm. praying and standing. And this one thing came to me as we were uh, thinking about tonight was sometimes when you can't pray, call on somebody else. Because there came times in our lives during this next year and a half that I was so weak in that place of, I've just got to keep standing in faith, and yet I couldn't. But I had so many prayer warriors standing around me. So that's why I'd encourage you, if you are in that place where you're afraid or worried, please text on the, on the live feed. Let us know so we can stand with you and pray for you. Because sometimes when we feel weak, we can have a brother, a sister of the Lord, pray for us and stand with us. Right. And, and you know, I don't know how much of the story we get in, but... You can imagine, you talk about storms, because Hannah was the most beautiful little girl, just loved life. She looked just right. like my beautiful wife here, had big brown eyes, was perfect. And she just got a little double vision. We thought she doesn't need glasses. But what, when, they, when they came in the room, they said, we're sorry, there's no hope, there's nothing we can do. She, there's, it's, it's inoperable. And I remember that, and they said, we don't know what will happen, because in the ponds of medullum, it's where every nerve every, that yeah. controls your body function, and so this tumor together. was wrapped mm -hmm. around those beginning of every nerve. So they said, we don't know what happens. She might just fall over dead, quit breathing, whatever. And, and, you know, and, and I only say this because, you know, we all have storms, and this was right. the storm of all storms in our life, for sure. Right. And so... I remember driving home that day, and, and, and it, was, it was the most horrible day of my life, of our lives, and I just... We were in silence. The stress yeah, was so thick yeah. in our car. We just, it was just so hard to wrap your brain around the storm that we had entered in that moment. Right, and, and so anyway, you know, we, you know, being a pastor, and, you know, of course, we had a church family, which was awesome. And we, we hadn't said anything to anyone at that no. point. We just yeah. were like, Lord, we yeah. don't know what to do, except for we know what your word says, and we're going to trust your word. Mm -hmm. And it was a sudden storm. You know, it's like, I mean, we were going to get glasses, and we end up in KU Med Center. No, in Children's Mercy. Or Children's Mercy Hospital, yes. yeah. getting news that 
your daughter's going to die, your baby's going to die, and ain't nothing you can do about it, you know, and so then, you know, you say, okay, we're going to start praying in faith, but it, and we began to pray, people began to pray, we did all the things we knew to do, we had amazing, amazing, people would come to our driveway and park out in our driveway and pray for Hannah. It was, it was beautiful it was what amazing. everybody did. Mm-hmm. And so we were believing for a miracle. We believed for a miracle. We believed she's going to be healed. And we just saw this other girl get healed, you know. And years before. Years before that. So we knew God heals tumors and stuff like that. And, right. And so anyway, the whole reason we're getting into that story is just so you'll know. And, and as Hannah progressed, you know, the tumor, like, like just so you'll know, like we don't really, we never really talked about this. It's been a while, but a long time. it's hard to talk about, but. You know, we didn't know what would happen. Her eye kind of quit working. And then I think that maybe one of the next things was one day on a Saturday morning, uh, we had five kids, and so we were just having breakfast. We were having cereal. I remember we were having cereal. We had a lot of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were having cereal, and Hannah comes down, and, and she's eating cereal. And I look over, and she's eating cereal with her left hand. And I said, Hannah, how come you're eating cereal with your left right. hand? And she said, Daddy, my right arm don't work anymore. And she just did that quick. She lost the work use. of, And, and she went from being perfectly healthy, beautiful little girl to when she died, she lost every function in her whole body. Except she, for she could bat she, her eyes She could blink her big m- brown eyes. She couldn't moment. talk. She, she couldn't swallow. She couldn't eat. She couldn't do nothing. And we took care of her in our living room until she died. Uh, at the age of 12. She burst into new life. She burst okay. into new life, and she's got it made now, and she's a part of our life. She's right there with us. But right. So anyway, it, it's a sad story. It's a, right. It, and, and, you know, that and it shook us. It, it shook it, us, yeah, and that's it, what this virus is doing to a lot of you. It's shaking your world right now. That shook our world. We were like, you know, believing God for healing. We were believing him to raise her up for this life. But you know what? We didn't lose because this, is, this life is only a vapor, right? We, she burst into a new life, a place that, that her waiting's over. Our waiting right. is still there. Right. But that's what we want to talk to you about. It didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen. We didn't see her healed for this life as much as we wanted to have her here, a part of our lives today. It didn't happen happen in this life but you know what god had a full purpose and he didn't do it let me tell you cancer is evil evil, this virus is evil it is not from the lord it is evil it is evil period end of discussion our god is good and if our god is good and our father is good he loves us so much he's not going to give us evil to straighten us up right he loves us so much that he wants to give us good things it is an evil thing that has come Right, and some people like think, "All oh, right, you did something bad, so God's zapping you with." Now you, you know, and and this, yeah. but that that can't be true because Hannah was like, if you knew Hannah, anybody knew Hannah, right. she was the most. Yeah, beautiful. she was still a kid and made she mistakes, had faith, right? But yeah, but she was, she was just amazing, you know, right. and she was innocent. She was innocent, right. you know, and so some people, oh well, I disobeyed God, and so we. You know, that's crazy. I remember that's when people sent us messages and said, oh, you're just too prideful. That's why God didn't heal her. Yeah. You didn't have enough faith. Those are very hard things to right. walk and through. Right. And, that's, and that's not true. It's no, it's not. And that's kind of, and we need to read the scripture, yeah, I guess. Let's so go ahead. Talking. <laughs> but, but let's read this because, see, see, what we're saying here is hitting home with a lot. Of, and when you get, if you get into faith camp, see, you almost can't talk like this. I mean, it's kind of like because people will, like, get mad at you because, like, you know, you're talking about this other faith, you know, because, you know, we got to. St- and, and but we did stand. We stood to the end. Right. It was a war. It was a battle. Right. I look back and and I it took me a lot of years to get over beating myself up because right. I'm the dad, you know, and I I couldn't do nothing. I, I could pray and maybe I should have fasted more. We drank too much Dr. Pepper. I mean, the devil was just hammering me every way, you know. Right. And, and 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 so I I would cry out to the Lord and I would seek the Lord and and, and then even after she died, I you know and, but I remember uh, the story and, and I want to read this and, and I'll just I'll say this and then we're gonna read this and then okay. go on because I mean w- this is kind of new territory for us because we very rarely talk sure. about this publicly. Right. Right. I don't know why, but maybe we should, but we never have. But Hannah died. 
And when she died, you know, you just go into this, we were kind of like numb, I think, and we Shock, weren't thinking yeah. straight. And then, of course, the pastor we wanted to do it could only come on a Wednesday. That was part of it. But for whatever reason, we're we so ended thankful up, for Pastor Steve, yeah, past and Steve and Kathy, Kathy from Kathy where Gray came, came up and, and did the funeral. And so many of our friends. But for whatever re for that and other reasons, we end up having the funeral on, on Wednesday afternoon. Well, Wednesday's church day, okay? And, and, and I'm going to say this, and then we're going to read the scripture. So Wednesday was church day. That day was the day we went and, and buried our daughter. And then the funeral, it was like, I would love to talk about the funeral. It was glorious. Right. We had the worship team. Hannah was buried in a wedding dress because she never got to have a husband. She said, Daddy, I'm good with dying. I'm good if I go to heaven. But the one regret she had was I don't get to have a husband. And I didn't get to go to prom. And our church here was amazing. <laughs> yeah. They decorated the, the youth center and put on a full-blown prom. She got in a... Rented uh, a limousine yeah. that came to our house when Hannah was very sick and picked her up and put on a prom for her. And then I had somebody in the church here who heard that, you know, I talked about the fact that she regretted that she never got to get married. And I just, God put on my heart like, well, hey, she's going straight to the best husband of all. She go, she's the bride of Christ. And he, and this, and this gentleman, he said, listen, and I had this idea of, of a wedding dress. And this guy told me, he said, I want you to go find the most beautiful wedding dress for Hannah. And so when we did her funeral yeah. in her casket, her wedding dress was flowing over the casket and we presented her as the bride of Christ to the best husband of all. So yeah. she went right straight to the top. Amen. <laughs> and that's how we did it, you know. So anyway, we say all that. But on that day, you know, you can imagine, you know, going to your daughter's funeral. And then we did all that. And God, just the glory of God was all over the place, you guys. Right. It was the most beautiful thing in the world. And we were kind of numb and, and we went and married her. It was the middle of the afternoon. We got home, and, you know, we just buried her, and we got home, and it was maybe 2 or 3 in the afternoon, and I don't remember exactly how I went down because a long time ago, but I remember looking at Lisa, and I said, man, we got church tonight, and we had Mark Marshall, who's probably watching. Mark, we love you, right. and he was scheduled to preach for us because we knew we weren't going to be preaching, and we were just like, you can imagine, you know, and, and I looked at Lisa, and I'm kind of like, what are we going to do? We got church tonight. It's just on a Wednesday night, just like tonight. And I just remember faith rose up on the inside of me. And I said, Lisa, we're going to go to church. Right. And we're going to go worship our God. Right. And I remember on that Wednesday night, we walked into church. And we walked right down to the front, right, right. down to the center. And when the music started to play on the day we buried our daughter, we began to worship. I remember yes. I think we even danced. And, yes. they, and we just praise God with all of our heart. And let me tell you, we've never stopped. Right. We've never stopped. And that Friday we went up to World Revival and worshipped up there. Worshipped up there. Yeah. I've been preaching ever since. And I remember. And uh, so there. So what I'm saying is what, what I've learned from this is what I'm starting to tell you tonight. Is, <laughs> is there is another kind of faith. Okay. Now, let, let, there's a whole other level of faith. See, it's one thing to believe for a miracle, a healing, but what if it doesn't happen? Well, when it doesn't turn out like you think it should have turned out, what you going to do then? Right. Are you going to go to church and praise him? Or are you going to throw in the towel? Yeah. Because I'm just telling you, there's going to be stuff in life. It ain't going to happen like you think it ought to happen. Right. It ain't going to go like you think it ought. Yeah. In this world, you're going to have tr you're going to have sudden storms, and your faith is going to be tested. And I pray that doesn't happen to anybody, right. but it happens to a lot of people, a lot of people. Okay, but I want this story. That's this story kind of capsulizes a part of this. Okay, in Matthew chapter eleven, we'll just start with verse one, and uh, we're going to read down through here just a little bit. Uh, it says, "And now it came to pass when Jesus finished con commanding the twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and preach in other cities, and then." And when John, John the Baptist, and by the way, and let me just remind you who John the Baptist, this John, it's John the Baptist. This is John the Baptist who's Jesus' cousin. This is John the Baptist that when he was still in his mother's womb and Mary was pregnant with Jesus and Mary came over to Martha's house. I'm not Martha, but uh, Elizabeth's house. 
And she was pregnant, and John the Baptist was in her womb. Jesus was in Mary's womb. They got together. That j- this is the John that leaped for joy in his mother's womb. This is the one that ate locusts and wild honey and preached the word of God and looked up and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the John we're talking about right here. John. It says, and then John had heard in prison. Where is he at? In prison. Hmm, I wonder if he count, I wonder if that was on his agenda. I wonder if that was part of his vision. That he was going to be in prison. We're talking John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. And he finds himself in prison. And he's in prison and he hears about Jesus. And then when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two disciples to Jesus and said to him, Jesus, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And I'm like, wow, that's John the Baptist. And he's having some questions here. Anybody ever have some questions in your life? And he better say, man, it ain't happening. Like, what, what's going on? Jesus, what, I mean, are you the one? Let me tell you, this gets real, doesn't it? It gets real. And there's a lot of people watching and saying, you know, if you're really God, why is this happening? What am I doing in prison? What am I doing in this right now? And so this blows my mind. He says, are you the one? And then verse 4, I love how Jesus answered him. And I, and, I, and I'm, you know, I could preach a little bit here, but Jesus answered and said to him, Go tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf are he- here, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And then he says, And blessed are those who are not offended because of me. In other words, basically what he's telling John is, John, you're going to have to trust me on this one. And blessed are you who are not offended in me because everything didn't happen the way you thought it was supposed to happen. Well, if you were really on the throne, what am I, why would I be in prison? I mean, I gave everything for you. I'm serving you. I gave up my life for you. And look what happened to me. I ended up in prison. I mean, I mean you can go there real quick, couldn't you? And he said, blessed are those who aren't offended because of me. Man, that's deep, you know, to me. Because I think there's a lot of people that things happen in life and we don't have an answer. It's a mystery sometimes. But see, that's what faith is all about, isn't it? Is that not really what faith is all about? You got anything? Yes. Well, I always like to have it all figured out. So, you know, for me, the faith walk has been one of those that's more challenging. You like to just just get up in the tree and jump off the cliff and <laughs> jump off, jump out of the tree and let's see where we land. But I'm the one who likes to have it all figured out. So my faith walk has always, it's been a challenge for me because I'm more yeah. logical. I'm more in that place. Yeah. So. And, you know, and whoever's watching, you know, I don't know who's watching. I know we had somebody watch Sunday that never tunes in. They said they, and they did, and, and God spoke to them. So maybe there's just one person. But the word offense, blessed are those who are not offended because of me. That word offended means to become a stumbling block. And how many people do we all know that are mad at God? Right. They're angry at God because it didn't happen. Like I thought, and if he's really a good God, what am I doing in prison? What am I in this mess? How come this happened? How come my kid died? How come whatever, whatever? Let me just tell you, God is good. If it ain't good, it ain't God. Right. And one of the greatest things we ever learned through this whole thing, and we learned it from Pastor Steve and up in Kansas City, was we, we decided way before any of this ever right. happened. Our what, founda- foundation was built. Yeah, we found it. And when this is what we decided. We, we had determined together we're never going to put God on trial. God is good. God End of discussion. Good, and we're not going to put him on trial. Right. We're just going to wait and talk to him when we get there. Right. Amen. I might have a question or two, but I... God, I'm going to trust you. Is that not what faith is? Faith right. is says, I trust you, God. No I don't matter know. what no matter I see. What. Right. See, you can imagine, you know, what's going through John's head. You can imagine John's mind like, Jesus, it's me. It's your cousin. I'm the one who said, hey, it's you. 
the Lamb of God. Come on, say something, pray something, and let the doors fling open wide. Right? I mean, he did it for Peter. Right. And this is John, his cousin. But then it gets crazier. How many know the end of this story? You, let me just tell the end of the story real quick. I know, I know it's, we don't have much time. Sorry. <laughs> don't look at your watch. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at my watch. Yeah, that, that's my wife saying that. But what else are we going to do? You right? know the end of the story, <laughs> how like they were having a party. Herod was having a party and they all got drunk and they got this young girl to come and dance. And it, it pleased him so much. He told this young girl that was dancing all wild and crazy and drunk. And and he said, hey, you, you please me so much. I will give you anything up to half of the kingdom. You tell me whatever you want, and it is yours. This is corrupt. It's right. evil. Right. And you know what she said? She went and talked to her mother, who hated John the Baptist, and she said, go ask him for John the Baptist's head on a platter. So not only did he not get out of prison, you guys, just in a short time here, he's, he got his head cut off by an evil king. Because of a girl dancing when they're all drunk. And I'm like, come on. Right. Come on. Where are you at, Jesus? Where are you at? How come, what, what's going on here? <laughs> Amen? So that's crazy. So, so what Jesus is saying, I think he was telling John, John, I love you, and I pray. What's fixing to happen? I think Jesus knew what was on the horizon. And he said, blessed are those who are not offended because of me. And I think what he's saying is, not everything's going to turn out the way you think it's going to turn out. Right. And then what you're going to do? Are you going to still praise? Are you still going to worship? You know? And so, uh, so basically, you know, that's a powerful <laughs> thing. And, but what I want you to notice that Jesus told him, he said, listen, don't go tell him this or tell him that. Tell him the word of God is being fulfilled. Tell him the blind see, the lame walk, the death here. In other words, the kingdom's here. The kingdom's here. Right, right. The kingdom's here. See, when it all comes down to it, we go back to the word. The foundation is the word. Go tell John the word of God is coming to pass. The kingdom right. is here, and yes, right. I'm the one. He yes. didn't say I'm the one, but you'll know I'm the one because everything that I said the kingdom was going to bring is happening right now. And take fruit it to the, the bank. Amen. Yeah, you I was going to say the yeah. fruit of the kingdom. They, they were seeing the fruit of the kingdom happening right there. Right. Amen. And you know, I was thinking about this today. Is there any greater honor that we could have than to die for our Lord Jesus Christ? And when we get to heaven, I think his head's going to be back on. <laughs> He's going to have a new body. But we're going to say, whoa, there's the man yeah. that laid it all down. Laid it all down. Right. And I don't understand that. We'd all tried to rescue him. Yeah. We'd all tried to pay his bell and get him out. And Jesus said, don't get offended because this ain't going to end like you think it's going to end. And see, to me, that's, that's crazy. It says, and, and, it, and it goes on to say, you know, about as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind. But what did you go out to see? A man clothed with garments. Indeed, those who will wear soft clothings in king's houses? No. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he in whom it was written, Behold, I send a messenger before your face who will prepare the way of the Lord. Verse 11, assuredly I say to you among those who have been born of women there is not there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist but the least in all of the kingdom of heaven will be greater than him. Wow. wow. And 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 you know so basically you know my point in this saying is this like there is this other faith and the other faith is when it doesn't happen like you think it should happen. Yeah, and, and you know, we'll, we'll mention Stephen because we talked about that today. You know, I, I think of Stephen in Acts chapter 6, who was a young man 
full of the Holy Spirit, full of the power of God, was a servant of the Lord. And he started, he was anointed of God, young and powerful, young man named Stephen, and a marvelous preacher. And in Acts chapter 7, he preaches this amazing sermon. And I mean, he calls these religious people, you stiff-necked, uncircumcised, you know, you always resist the Holy Spirit. And it got him so mad, the religious people so mad, that they gnashed on him with their teeth. And I don't know what that is, but I don't think it's good. <laughs> and then they, they threw him down, and they began to stone him. And the Bible says that Stephen looked up at those who were stoning him, and he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Sound kind of like somebody else I know whose name is Jesus. And the Bible says that as they were stoning him, that they took the coats of the one who were stoning him and put them in the arms of a young man named Saul. And Saul was standing there watching this whole thing, holding the coats of the ones throwing the stones. And he was looking at Stephen, who had so much potential in the prime of his life, he preached the best sermon he's ever preached. He's going to be the next Billy Graham, you know, the next T.D. Jakes. And he's going to have his T-shirts and his own ministry. And he's going to be great. And he's going to do great things, a worldwide ministry. He's just getting started. And boom, the next thing you know, he's in the middle of a group of people. And he's being stoned to death. I wonder if he saw that coming. And the Bible says, he said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And the Bible says that he looked up and that his face was shining like the face of an angel. And, you, and this young man holding the coat, whose name was Saul, was watching the whole thing. He was on his way to persecute the church. And he's watching this young man, so much potential, give his life for his faith. He said, what would cause him to say, Father, forgive him. And he's shining. His face is shining. And the Bible says they looked up to heaven and Jesus was standing. What, what an amazing time. That's the only time. Jesus said, I got to stand up for this guy. and Welcome him into my kingdom. But here's what I think. You said, man, I don't understand this. But I don't think Saul, who later became Paul, the writ wrote so much of the Bible, could ever get over the faith of Stephen, who said, you do whatever you want to do to me. I will not deny my God. Yeah. That's the other faith right there. Yeah. That's the other yeah. faith right there. He says, I will praise you though they slay me, yet will I praise you. So your face will shine with the glory of God. And see, sometimes it doesn't end the way we think it should end. And the last thing you know, uh, we'll share here is in Hebrews 11, and I want to start with verse number 32, and I'll just read this, and listen to me. This is our heritage. These are our forefathers, child of God. These are the ones that went before us. These are the ones we're going to be hanging out with when we get to heaven. And we'll say, oh, well, I suffered for Jesus. You know, I went to church that Sunday when the air conditioner broke down, and I actually sweat. <laughs> Woo! Man, that preacher, man, I stayed in there. He preached till 12, 15, and I didn't even get up and leave. <laughs> I'm suffering for Jesus. Amen. I mean, literally, you guys, come on. Yeah. We're going to be hanging out with these people I'm fixing to read about. We're going to be hanging out with Stephen. You're going to be hanging out with John the Baptist. You're going to be hanging out with people who laid it all on the line. Right. And some of them got to see the miracles. Some of them got to see delivered. Let me tell you, Daniel in the lion's yeah. den was the yeah. exception, not the rule. That's right. Not everybody got delivered from the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were the exception, not the rule. Most of the Christians burned to death at the stake. Nobody talks about that. That's right. God didn't come and rescue them, but they sang as they died. And Nero said, why must these Christians sing while they die? Whew, that's faith right there. Yeah. Am I right about that? And so let's just read this and I'll stop. 
I will stop. <laughs> I'm not used to this. I'm just kind of neat having my wife up here. It's a new season. Different time. It's a different time. And yeah, there's bad stuff, but good stuff can come out of it. Amen. That's right. Amen. But let's just read this, and it, it kind of speaks for itself. Listen, let me remind you. These are the people we're going to rub elbows with when we get to heaven. We'll hang out with. And, and what's going to be our story? What's going what's to be your story? You live for yourself. It's all about you. You're all hung up in your own life. And I'm not trying to get down on people, but these people were, these people were all about God. These people were all about their faith. To the point of their death. They died for their faith. Let's just read it. And what more shall I say? This, by the way, this is Paul, who was Saul, who was changed by a young man named Stephen, who died unexpectedly, way in the prime of his life. It made no sense in the natural, but God had a plan. And God used something that maybe we couldn't see. And, and so... It says, and so what more can I say? Verse 32. This Hebrews eleven thirty-two, And what more can I say, shall I say? For time shall fail me to tell you of Gideon and of Barak, of Samson, Japheth, and of David, and of Samuel, the, and the prophets, who, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weaknesses were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. And see, all these things, are these are good things, aren't they? These are all faith things. They raised life again. But here we go. Others, though, were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. This is a different kind of faith right here, amen? A different kind of mindset. And there again, don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm believing for a long life, and, you know, I'm just going to lay down and go to sleep and go be with Jesus. But could there be any greater thing that we could do if we really believed than to give our life for the Lord Jesus Christ? To be a living sacrifice, let me tell you, being a living sacrifice is harder than being a dead sacrifice. Because you got to get up every day and make that decision and say, I ain't living for me today. I'm dying to myself today. bad thing about a living sacrifice is that living sacrifice can get up off the altar anytime yeah. you decide, oh, I'm going to go do my own thing today. Yeah, that's right. And so, anyway, let me finish. It says, yeah. that's right. It says their woman, uh, let's see, it says, others were tortured not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mockings and scourgings, and yes, of chains and of imprisonment. They were stoned. Listen, they, they were sawn in two. They were slain with the sword. They, wa- they, they were tempted. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Listen, I love this. Look at verse number 30. I, I underlined this. Of whom the world was not worthy. That's the other faith right there. I didn't get delivered. I went through the storm. I went through the fire. It didn't happen. But I kept the faith. I praised him anyway. I praised him in the fire. Praised him in the storm. Praised him when nothing was going. All hell breaks loose. See, anybody can praise him on the mountaintop. But who has the faith to praise him right in the middle of the fire? And I don't want that for anybody. But at the same time, you know, if it's for the glory of God, what greater privilege could there be? And so they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all of these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. But they never gave up. They never quit. They never lost their faith. They didn't see the end result they were living for. And they died in their faith, still believing. Wow. I mean, you don't hear much about this anymore, do you? We hear about the 
ones that had the victory and got healed and all this. But what about the ones who said, no, we went through the fight and we never lost our faith. Yeah. I think those are the giants right there. Yeah. And it says they, they never received the promise. Verse 40, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. You know, I tell people when you get to Hebrews 11, it's not been finished yet. The chapter's still being written. And I tell people, guess what, guys? It's our turn now. These are our forefathers. This is our heritage. These are the ones that went before us. And, and you know, we think we're going through the hard times. I don't remember, you know, maybe over in Egypt and some other places, they're getting killed in China. Did you hear about China right now? They're trying to shut the church down. I just saw it just this week. All the home groups, they're trying to shut them down. They're trying to, and the more they try, the, the more the church explodes. There is persecution like we in America don't know anything about. We just take it for granted. And now we can't do this. And we had a pastor got arrested yesterday. They came to his house and put handcuffs in Florida because he went ahead and had church last week. They came to his house, and I'm not saying he did the right thing. I'm just saying it's crazy because they went to his house, put him in handcuffs, and took him to jail because he went ahead and had church last week. And I'm not saying it was the right thing to do or whatever. You know, I'm just saying that's crazy. Yeah. See, America, we don't know about stuff like that. We just take it for granted. And yet these are our forefathers. We ought to be so th thankful right. for what we have. And yet I wonder sometimes that's not what leads to our complacency. And our apathy. Mm -hmm. There is no persecution, man. We can just kind of kick back and play church and play Christianity instead of, and I'm telling you, if you know you're going to get your head cut off, if you say you're a Christian, you're going to think twice before, oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You know? And so to me, you know, maybe sometimes so what we're going through here is going to cause the real church to rise and shine, yeah. you know? And I don't know. But anyway, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like I know we didn't really do this justice, but, but there is another faith. There's a deeper level of faith. There's a faith that goes beyond just, you know, and thank God for every healing. And I'm going to pray for everybody to be healed, everybody to be delivered. Right. And I have a lot yes. of faith. It is God's will to heal. Amen. All True. sickness, all disease. Yes. But it doesn't always happen. I'm, you know, it hasn't sure happened to happen in my life. And I prayed for a lot of people and they didn't get healed including my own daughter, and, and yet I, I feel like I still have faith. Right. I still, I, my faith is strong. It's almost even stronger. <laughs> right. That's what people say, man, you tell me about going to be in heaven, I'm, I'm ready, man. Just bring it on, because this is the hard life. But th just let me just say this, uh, and I know you want to say that. I just want to say one last thing. Listen, we get one chance and when this life is over, we'll, we'll never get to praise him again in our pain. We'll never get to praise him in the midst of the mystery. We'll never get to raise a hallelujah in the middle of the storm. This is our only chance, you guys. And I don't know about you, but I think we ought to embrace it, embrace every moment, and say, you will not take my song. You will not take my praise. You can't have my hallelujah. And I'm, I'm going to be a living moving hallelujah right. in the middle of the mystery. And I have faith that says when I see him face to face, and I might even if I have a question, I probably won't even have one then, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm sure he's going to have the answer. And I'm going to go, wow. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. So the other faith, see, that's the faith that I, that I think God wants to see. Don't be offended. Jesus said, because of me, because it doesn't happen like you think it was going to happen. Yeah. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me with all of your heart. Amen. I wanted you to say the blessing over us. Yes. Once, I, once, I, once I pray, I would like to pray, uh, especially for those on the front lines. I know that we've got medical personnel that are out there on the front lines. And I know that being in this, in this situation right now, that, that fear can grab a hold of people's lives and, and, it, and a fear can spread like a virus. You know, the virus can spread, but fear, fear can spread like that virus. Than the, sometimes the virus. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to pray for protection for everyone in the medical field that's on the front lines, for those uh, first responders, the police, all of those that are in the midst of, of all this change that they still have to be on the front lines. But then I, I'd like for pastor to just say the blessing over us at yeah. that after that lord i just thank you tonight yes, that your word yes, is lord. true and lord when we don't understand things and we don't see things lord that we can still put our trust yes, in you lord. and lord we will praise you i yes, thank lord. you god that yes, you're lord. a good yes, god lord. and we love you lord we exalt you lord you are yes, so lord. good to us you always have Hallelujah. good for your children yes, we just lord. thank you lord thank you, lord. lord i thank pray you, for lord. the those uh medical personnel on the front lines lord he Healing and strength, and Lord, Jesus, Lord, Lord, break that fear in New their York minds City, in Jesus' York, name. Yes, break the fear, break the, the fear that's Jesus, trying to come in, even in our in in, in our community, Jesus. Lord. Yes, break Lord. that fear yes, off Lord. in yes, Jesus, Jesus' name, Jesus, Lord. Lord. I just pray you Jesus, just put a grace covering Jesus, all over the medical Hallelujah. personnel Hallelujah. right now in Jesus' Hallelujah. name, Lord. I pray for the mayor of our city, the the governor of our our state, Lord, for the police, for all the city um, officials, Lord. Lord, direct their paths now in Jesus' name. Lord, let your ways be their ways, Lord. Let let your truth come into their lives, Lord. I just thank you, God, that you are, we can trust you. Lord, I trust you, and I continue, I will continue to trust you, no matter what, because you are good. End of discussion. Lord, we just love you and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. And we do rise up one last time and we together we agree together you said if two or more agree as touching anything it shall be done and we just rise up right now and we release our faith right now and we curse this virus yes. in the name of yes. jesus lord we just speak yes. against it right now in jesus, jesus name. name and jesus the fear name. that's you going out go. right now in the name of jesus in go. the name of jesus divine jesus. protection over every home every family no sickness plague or disease will come near our dwellings lord in jesus name yes, lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And let me just pray that blessing over you as a, as a spiritual father, as a pastor here in this yes, region. Thank you, Lord. I just say over all of you right now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May his face shine upon you, smile down on you. May the light of his countenance be all over you. May our, may our light shine in this dark time. Yes, and here's the most important thing. And may our God give to you shalom, peace, right smack dab in the middle of the storm. Peace to your home, peace to your family, peace to your kids, peace to your finances. Put your trust in the Lord, for we trust in our God, and we will not be shaken, because our kingdom cannot be shaken. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, join us in the morning. Uh, Pastor will be here to do chapel nine at 9 o'clock. in the morning, yes. And then once again, if you haven't signed on, we're kind of creating this family. And it's hard to know you're out there if you don't leave a comment. Or just let us know where you're watching from and become part of our family. Because we do this all the time. Chapel every day, every day, every day. And I've really been trying to bring things that will help in this season and you I'm know, looking forward to Sunday morning, too, because Sunday you only morning. got through part one <laughs> yeah, instead of one yeah. and two. And I think it's going to be the good. The power of yeah, focus. So yeah. it'll be really good. So yeah. make sure you're tuning in. Yeah, I'm excited about that already. So Lord bless you. And, and, you know, thanks for joining us and spread the word. You know, let people know we're going to be on here. We'll be back here at 9 o'clock in the morning. So have a great night.